Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokdal. Just in case you are wondering, the slogan, No East, No West, Islam is the Best, was the slogan of one of the Malaysian student groups in the 1970s and 1980s in the United Kingdom. If you are young, you probably think that the Islamizing of Malaysia is a recent phenomenon. You are wrong. The Islamization of Malaysia started in earnest in the mid to late 1970s and the Iranian or the Islamic Revolution of 1979 gave the movement a much needed boost. This is in Malaysia. Both the Tunku, Tunku Abdul Rahman and the third Prime Minister Hussein On declared that Malaysia was set up as a secular state with Islam as the official religion, as enshrined in the constitution. Our federal laws are supreme. And that is why alarm bells were set off when the minister in the prime minister's department, or the, rather the religious affairs minister, Muhammad Naim Mokhtar, said in a Banama report dated the 1st of August that he wanted to harmonise the Sharia and civil laws of Malaysia with the ultimate purpose to dignify Sharia law to its rightful sovereign position. He said that one of the aims of the process of harmonisation was to elevate the position of Islam as the religion of the Federation. So in response to the minister, does harmonization mean that civil laws will be made Sharia compliant? If so, will the rights of non-Muslims be protected? How long will it be before Sharia laws reign supreme above federal laws? Going by the Islamization of the nation, a process which was started in earnest, as I said, in the 1980s, it won't be long before clerics, the ulamaks, rule over the judges. Did Naim care to take into consideration the feelings of the people of Sabah and Sarawak? Will the terms of the Malaysia Agreement of 19? 1963, be honoured. There will be much opposition to the harmonisation process and it will be challenged by both East and West Malaysians. Our dual system of laws, civil and Sharia, they are conflicting enough, but uh, they also send out mixed messages to the public. Incidentally, what does the minister mean by wanting to elevate the position of Islam as the religion of the Federation? Isn't the recognition that Islam is the official religion of Malaysia good enough? How much higher or how much more elevating does Islam need? Will the process of elevating Islam erode the constitutional rights of the people of Sabah and Sarawak. In the Banama report, Naim hoped that harmonization of the laws will eventually help to achieve the development of a community of people who stand up for equity and justice. What nonsense is he talking about? Malaysians can stand up for equity and justice just by civil laws alone. Sharia law often takes precedence. Why? The Rakyat enjoyed relatively harmonious relations until politicians placed heavy emphasis on religion and created a man-made mess in the country by making Sharia laws more supreme than civil laws. And to make matters worse, many civil laws are selectively applied. 
for example, controversial Muslim preachers, including those from overseas, have made many incendiary remarks and whipped up racial and religious sentiments. So why was the Sedition Act not properly enforced? Federal law states that no woman will be whipped and yet a number of Malay women have been whipped under Sharia law. Why? Because they had sexual intercourse out of wedlock. Then in 2018, in Tranganu, two women were whipped for having same-sex relations. And if you cast your mind back to 2009, Kartika Sari Dewi Sukarno was sentenced to be whipped for consuming beer. The order was rescinded when her case created international headlines and caused Malaysia a lot of shame. Therefore, despite federal laws being supreme, we find Sharia law taking precedence. How will Sharia law help the victims of rape when only the testimony of four Muslim male eyewitnesses is allowed? How does the woman get justice? You can also ask the many thousands of Muslim women who were divorced by their husbands and then failed. They were failed by Sharia law. Many of these women were denied alimony or maintenance for the children of the product of the marriage. Bigamy is an offence in Malaysia and is punishable by a seven-year jail term and a fine. However, polygamy is allowed for Malay males. A man who wants to commit polygamy must treat each of his wives equally. However, Sharia law rarely enforces this ruling strictly. If you recall, Hindu mother Indra Gandhi was denied access to her youngest daughter, whom her convert husband converted along with their other children and kidnapped in 2009. This is an example of Muslim Sharia arrogance over the constitutional rights of a Malaysian and a mother. After divorcing her husband, Indira was given custody of her children by the civil courts. So how can the matter of forced conversion of minors be a matter for Sharia courts? Moreover, as a Hindu, she could not challenge the conversion as Sharia law does not apply to non-Muslims. The case was definitely a matter for the civil courts. In January 2018, the federal court delivered a landmark ruling and ordered the then Inspector General of Police, Khalid Abu Bakr, to locate and arrest Indra's ex-husband and return her youngest child to her. However, Khalid refused to execute the order, claiming confusion between civil and Sharia laws. By refusing to carry out the court's orders, the IGP, the former IGP, was denying Indra her constitutional rights. Many Malaysians also wonder if the then IGP was truly morally conflicted or was he merely bowing down to the will of his political masters? Now, if the president of PAS, Hadi Awang, alleges that bribery and corruption do not fall under hudud laws, then how will this crime be punished? And as you and I know, we have so many corrupt Malay politicians. Despite earlier promises of politicians that non-Malays and non-Muslims will not be affected by Sharia laws, many real-life cases have proven otherwise. You see, there is Islam, the religion which guides many Muslims on how to lead their daily lives. And then there is political Islam. Sadly, 
Islam is not a personal faith in Malaysia anymore. Why? Because it has become a political tool for politicians who use it to gain more power and political mileage. So the religious affairs minister, Naim, knows. He knows that the federal constitution is supreme. So we can ask him, are his remarks mere political propaganda to be used by the unity government in the upcoming state, six state elections this Saturday? Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.